I'd like you to go down on the left hand side where you see the word resources. And if you click on resources, you should get a whole bunch of folders. In the folder for seminars, summer 2018, the thing that you see here. You'll see one that says Science Fair. And I'd like you to click in that folder. And you find another folder. And in there, I'd like you to go to where it says Scientific Method Prezi. The second one down. And uh, I'd actually like you to walk, once that loads, I'd like you to actually walk yourself through the Prezi. What I'd like you to do while you do that is in your notebook, jump down the steps of the scientific method, because I don't expect hearing it like it's stuck. But this way you've got it written down in front of you. I didn't actually bring a computer. I can call some and stuff. Oh, then there's computers over um, in the shades room. Okay. Okay. So All right. Grab one. All right. Okay. Thank you. This way you'll have it to refer back to. I mean, this is always going to be on here. I'm not going to get rid of this. But me personally, when I do things, I always have a notebook at my fingertips so I can jot stuff down so that it's a real quick reference for me later on. The science fair is a way to get out of having to take a test at the end of school when you don't want to be there anymore and your brain's already on summer vacation. It's a really, really good thing because then by end of March, you've done what you need to do. And then you can kind of just ease out that part and not worry about it. So that's there. We'll deal with that later on. I have it in the folder just because it's a great place to have everything at one central location for you. Now the other thing that we did last year for the first time in middle school is a competition called PJAS. It's Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science. And that is the same kind of experimentation, research, but instead of actually doing a display board like I showed you yesterday over in the Shades room, you're doing a PowerPoint. And they give you a rubric ahead of time so you don't compete against other students, you compete against the rubric. So basically all you have to do is go through the rubric, make sure you've got everything that they ask you for, and if you do, you can score very well. And they score them on a one, two, three, or four level, and if you score a one, at the top, then you get invited to go to the state PJS competition, which is in um, State College, and you can win quite a bit of money and different prizes there, because there's all different kinds of scholarships available through competitions. Our goal by providing you this is not to only have you learn a love for science, but also to have you realize that there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do. And you've heard some really neat stuff about some of our high school students and where they are, and as far as even looking at patents for their work um, and selling their work to different companies. But we also want you to be excited about different ideas. And I can honestly tell you that by the time you get to be an adult, I personally think for many adults, it's a lot harder to have good, new, original ideas. Like, I think a lot of adults tend to go, well, if you're going to fix something, you just do it this way. And you guys, you're like, why would you do it that way? And you can do it da 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 and it works so much better. And you guys have so many more like original ideas, or you're not thinking, well, that's not going to work, because I know it's not going to work. You just try it. And that's the good thing. That's all about science. And the other thing I found in this folder that I want to have us take a look at, and it's not something you're going to need today. It's more just so you know it's there. I put up this document, which is what I give my classes. And I'm going to have you click on this. It's a science fair document. And you'll see we start out with, um, basically it's a bunch of dates. And I give my students pretty much a calendar when we're doing science fair. And you can see like mid-November is when we start getting the choices together. 
But I also go through and put on here um, different things for them to do. And then that you have to write a research paper now. I personally find this to be really annoying that I get this little box. So hopefully you guys can open it in a different way. I'm going to actually open mine up in Word so you can see it a little bit better. Up here, but this is what I really wanted to focus on with you guys before we split up. So when you write a research paper, you're going to start with a title page. And you're going to have a table of contents. And you're going to have an abstract. And this is something, like I said, you're not there yet. But again, I wanted you to see and kind of know this is what you want to keep in the back of your head. An abstract. That is the thing you write the last. Why? Because this is where you basically explain all of your work in 200 words or less. So you need to have everything done before you can possibly think about your abstract. An introduction where you're going to give your hypothesis. You're going to explain what prompted your research and what you hope to achieve. Like, why did you do it? Okay. Um, in Avery's case, she's trying to figure out how to get rid of chicken mites. Okay, because they can make chickens sick, correct? Um, so that's definitely things that will go in her introduction when she gets to that point. A materials and methods section where you're describing step by step what was your experiment. You're putting in all the equipment that you used at that point. It should be, I always tell my students, it should be where someone can pick up your paper and actually do the experiment from what you've written. So there shouldn't be anything they have to guess about or kind of assume. Everything is very step-by-step, -step, very detailed, and they could follow your directions to do the actual experiment. Then, that's also where you would include photographs and drawings of the equipment that you used. When you do your work this summer, or in the fall, or whenever you're doing work for science fair or any kind of experimentation, Try to get in the habit of you're taking pictures along. Like once you have your setup ready to go, then you'd be taking pictures of your setup, taking pictures of the equipment that you're using. If you can get somebody to take pictures of you um, while you're working. Now, the thing to keep in mind for science fair is you can't have any pictures that show you, the project back of your head, but they can't show you because the judges might, are local people, so they might know you. They might know your parents. So you can't be at, in actually a picture. Your hands are great. Um, back of your head is good. That kind of thing. Sometimes you'll see people in a mask because if you're masked up, there's no way that you could possibly know who that is unless you know who you're looking at. Um, then a discussion, the heart of your paper, that's where you're going to explain your thoughts and your actions, what you did. That's where you clearly state all your results you've seen. That's where you're going to have your graphs, your tables of data. And that's one thing you look through the Prezi. You saw they were showing you different graphs, different tables. That's very important when you actually put your research together, figuring out how to do that piece. We're very fortunate that we have Mrs. Krahatsky here because she can add the mathematics piece. And if you don't get that far this summer, that's fine. You will have math teachers. We, have, we can help you. Um, we have math teachers we can kind of point you to if it's above our head as far as the math goes when you get to that point in your research. Also, you're going to make sure you compare your research with published data. Um, that's why when you guys were working yesterday and starting to look at the literature search and the lit review on what's out there already, that's stuff that you want to keep in mind because you're going to need to compare whatever you find with what's already out there and what other scientists have found. The last piece there, that's new. And that's new because one of the things that we've really seen in the past couple of years is that for PJS especially, for writing works, they would like to see the possible sources of error. Like once you've gone through and done your research, what might have skewed your results? You know, what might have given you the results that you got, even though you think you did fine? You know, but what, what might have happened? Like, for example, if you're working with cell cultures and you take notice that the incubator temperature isn't right, that could definitely give you 
different results than what you would have gotten otherwise if you kept the temperature the same the whole time. So, or if, for example, if you know that some a piece of equipment wasn't sterilized, or you realized after you did it it wasn't sterilized, that again is a source of error because then you could be adding contamination into your results. Conclusions, just simply summarizing your results. And then references, that's where you're going to do a bibliography. Now on here, there is, in that folder, there is an easy bib link. In the middle school, we use Noodle Tools. Are you guys familiar with Noodle Tools? Have you used that yet? Mrs. Sawyer typically will do a, a quick introduction to Noodle Tools and get you guys signed up for an account. So that's something that once we get into back into school, that's something we might want to think about doing um, during ER for our research group. That if you decide that you want to keep working on your research, get you in during an ER and get her to get you set up in Noodle Tools, that way you can use it anytime. It's something that is an internet source. You just go in and pop in your information and then it basically lays out your bibliography for you. For some of the sources that you might be reading, you might get to the bottom and it says um, citation, and it already has a bibliography for you. So somewhere as easy as copying and pasting over into your work then. Okay, but just to give you an idea, this is here and it gives you a little bit of explanation about what you're going to be expected to do. And then in here also a research plan and a post-project summary. This is something again that's required. As you do your research with Reading Burks, they actually ask for a three-ring binder, and I know our high school students take their lab notebooks. Okay. Um, for our middle school students, we have you do like a one-inch three three-ring binder and just put all of your things in there. So like, the, you have to actually write your research paper, have your research plan, and everything. It's all just in a binder that sits in front of your display at the science fair then. Okay, so that's just, again, are you there yet? No. But this is all information that you have that as you go, you can kind of work through it. And then I just, in here I also have the rubrics that I give my students for um, their papers and like just so they know how they're being graded ahead of time. That's something that honestly you will not need to know. But the reason I kept it in here is because of the fact that it kind of gives you a reminder what needs to be on my board, what needs to be on my science fair display when you get to that point of actually setting it up. Okay. So like I said, my goal was not to spend an hour of your time. It was just more to give you an introduction into what you're going to need. So you know it's here, you know it's in that folder, so you don't have to worry about jotting down everything. The part I need you to have that I want to make sure you had was that scientific method and the steps and the pieces. So I think we're good there. All right. Anybody have any questions? <coughs>